Thank you, Arvind. I think this is the second talk I am giving in this demo video. Um, Arvind, it's okay to keep the video on, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> seeing Arvind approach me, uh, talk about systems thinking, and I was wondering uh, no, how to present it. But there is a good book that he had shared with me. Um, but I, I want to uh, discuss systems thinking much uh, um, in terms of uh, ecology or even um, in very simple terms, and especially in Indian context. Um, how more than knowing what is systems thinking, um, we also have to see how we we prevented ourselves from uh, thinking in systems. So I have prepared a series of uh, uh, no, anecdotes, stories, and case studies, which I will share with it. And then probably we can then and there stop and ask questions. Maybe we have three interruptions. So initially, I want to ask you guys that what you, uh, Arvind, is there a chat window or something that we can ask? I can ask questions and then they can answer. There is a Q and A icon um, visible okay. to others, but okay. uh, yeah, we prefer direct uh, audio. OK, yeah. OK, uh, so my question is uh, to you guys that uh, what do you guys think is systems thinking? Maybe then no, I don't need to repeat a lot of things. What do you think is systems thinking? Oh, we can go audio also. Yeah. My understanding is uh, take a multidimensional approach to okay. understanding the problem or going towards a solution. Okay. If you are only a, if you are an engineer, don't think only in engineering terms. You okay. should also think from other perspectives. Other, oh yeah, other perspectives, yes. Uh, is there any other uh, familiarity with systems thinking or what do you guys think? Or maybe people are already using it. Is I, I want it to be a little bit interactive so that, uh, um, yeah. Uh, Sogam is saying not very familiar with, uh, Sogam, you can speak if you, uh, if you want to speak. Not very familiar with technical aspects of system engineering. Okay. So, so the system engineering and system thinking are similar? Um, no, systems engineering is very different. Okay. Right. Uh, is there any other answer? Uh, any other people familiar with systems thinking? So uh, I'll, I'll just play a comedy now, okay? And I'll then explain how it is related to systems thinking. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so let let's see. This is a stand-up comedy show uh, by a very popular American stand-up comedian called C.K. Louis, and uh, and uh, this is his show, and it's one of the very 50, uh, no, 10 minute act that opens that he has a discussion with his daughter. And you know how children are very curious and they keep asking why, why, why. So this is such an episode where a father is being pestered by a child about you know, his questions of why, 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 why. And then he, he keeps answering that. So let's see that first. Can you play outside? No. Why? Because it's five o'clock in the morning. It's too early. Why? The sun hasn't come up yet. <laughs> Why? Because the sun comes up later. Why? <laughs> The earth goes around, and when it turns a certain amount, the sun shows on the horizon. Why? I don't know. Why? Why don't you know, Papa? Because I didn't pay attention in school, okay? I didn't listen in class. 
Why? <laughs> because I was high all the time. <laughs> Smoke too much pot. <laughs> Why? I didn't, I didn't think it would matter. <laughs> Why? I just figured my life would come together on its own. Then I met your mom, and you came along. So now I work at the muffler shop. Hi. Well, it's too late for me to pursue a career now. And since your mom has a job with benefits, I stay home and I take care of you. Because what I make is pretty much just a joke. Hi. Well, the service economy replaced manufacturing. <laughs> There's no real jobs in America anymore. Why? We had good jobs for a while, but. <laughs> It's just because we were lucky, and now we're unlucky. Why? It's just the way it goes. Why? Because God is dead, and we're alone. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you guys able to see this? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so, what did you gather from this? Uh, is there a? Can you share your observations of this comedy? What do you think? It's a little bit vulgar. I mean, uh, Louis is always a little vulgar. Do you see the how he uh, explains things? Yeah, I mean, everything is incorrect in the sense you can keep answering why and asking why, and the answers are never ending. I mean, never you can never yeah. stop. Okay. And uh, so, uh, individuals, uh, so it starts with the individual's uh, problem, right? That, uh, no, uh, is she is asking why and uh, no, why you didn't study properly. You know, first, the first series of questions is that. Uh, about the sun and rising, and then later he accepts that he didn't study properly. Now she is asking why he didn't study properly. Then the problem from the individual, uh, the individual problem ends up being the no, uh, he zooms out and then he looks at the entirety of the issue. Um, whether it is true or not, he may be just lazy, but he makes some very valid observations of um, you know, uh, economics affecting his life. Um, so, um, and in the end, he says uh, something that God is dead and we are alone. Uh, uh, not to talk about atheism or something, but uh, there are two valid things that I want to uh, relate this committee to the system thinking. One is uh, the concept of individual or looking at things as parts or uh, no, looking at things as uh, just an independent entity or either a product or uh, no, a person, right? Uh, looking at anything or a nation or uh, no, looking at anything as an individual, is, it's not true, okay? Uh, it is not true, uh, don't you think so? And that is what he's pointing out actually. And everything is, as uh, Gopi said, everything is interconnected. And the interconnection is, um, so uh, basically we are trained to look at things as, uh, you know, um, just an uh, independent entity. Um, I don't know where we got this straight, but gradually as we grow, we start um, um, due to the, you know, and the culture and things, uh, we are trying to focus on, focus on one thing. Uh, so um, nothing is, the lesson I take from this comedy is nothing is uh, uh, whole. Uh, the two words I want to constantly use in this conversation is part and a whole. Okay. So whenever we look at things, we think it's a whole, and uh, no, and it is not part of any whole. Actually, so the the myth is actually that it is a whole, but it is actually a part of a whole. 
So the comedian, the father is not a whole. Uh, okay. The father is a part of the entire American culture, right? So that's what he's pointing out. He is a part of the whole. And uh, he's saying that how the whole affected the part. Um, so, so the system thinking, one layer of system thinking is zooming out and seeing the, uh, that anything is a part of the whole, right? That is zooming out. And uh, we can say it's a micro view uh, of the system that is around any part or we mistake it for a whole, right? Um, another thing is that we look at any hole thinking that it is a black box. Uh, I think engineers understand what is black box or white box. Uh, so we look at anything and we think it is a black box or it is a hole, but it is not. Uh, any, well, if you say human anatomy, if you have any disease, um, you know, uh, a disease, uh, though, though we feel sick, a person feels sick, it is not the entire whole, it is a part. And which part is what is the uh, a mastery that we should know, that we should know which part I am coughing and what is the part that is uh, creating this problem. And if if you know anatomy or uh, if you understand human body, you will know most of it is in the stomach. Actually, uh, that is why uh, another uh, I want to introduce the next person, which is uh, you know uh, Tirukural or Tiruvalluvar, or even you take Ayurveda or Indian medical system. They say, you know, gut uh, recently, uh, even allopathy has started talking about gut, gut health, okay, um, especially as asthmatic. A um, uh, lot of times, asthma, uh, asthmatics were told it is allergy, actually. Though it is not actually allergy, uh, it, is, uh, it is the part, the gut, actually. Gut affects a lot, not just asthma, many diseases develop from gut, actually. Though gut is a part of the whole body whole. And uh, disharmony or uh, in uh, no, uh, bad health of uh, gut can affect the entire whole. So uh, body, human body as a whole uh, is made up of a lot of parts and uh, these parts will affect the whole. Uh, so there is a micro system also. There is a macro system and there is a micro system. So anytime you are looking at a part and a whole actually. So, um, so you look at a person, he is part of the entire culture. And he's, he's also part, uh, no, he's also a whole made up of many parts. You look at a company, a company is a part of a whole, okay, a business structure. I mean, the whole business culture is part of that. And then a company also has system within it, it has parts within and it has mechanism within. So you can apply this for anything in your life. Uh, so in physics also, we have, uh, no, Quantum, quantum physics and then you know, macro physics or whatever, I don't know actually. Even economics, we have macroeconomics and microeconomics. Um, similarly, any any time we are looking at a uh, part and a whole, actually, uh, that is the essential system thinking, which we generally are not trained to look at. We are trained to look at individuals as individuals, actually. Uh, when we meet a person, we look at them and we judge their character. Uh, we often forget that a person is made of a whole, you know, uh, many, uh, many culture, either time or space uh, defines the person uh, and their behavior. Um, also, yeah, so uh, we have to, we have to move from this uh, segmented view or compartmental view to constantly, uh, we are looking at a part, you know. Um, so that is that is the shift that a system thinker need to have or to develop system thinking. We need to uh, constantly remind ourselves that anything is a part of a whole and has uh, many parts within uh, to make it as a whole. Right. Um, so it's a little uh, funny and philosophical, but that's how it is, I believe. Yeah. So uh, so the word uh, this is Joseph. Let me introduce you to the next uh, person, uh, you know, Balluar. Valluvar said, uh, Tirukural, uh, there is a Tirukural saying that Marundana Vendavam Yakek Arundiyadu Atradu Potri Unil means you don't need a medicine if you if you know what to eat and what not to eat. That means uh, he, there is a very beautiful understanding of Indian medicine that a body needs no medicine if you know what to eat and what not to eat. That means the body is a huge system and you have to be aware 
basically is saying about what to eat, not to eat means gut actually. So everything goes to gut and uh, you should be very, very careful about what you eat or not. That means they understood gut health long before. Uh, very last few years, the gut health has been discussed um, in uh, you know, um, allopathic medicine or Western medicine. But this is a very, very... Uh, Yeah, so to in give importance to a part of the whole um, is also, uh, uh, let's take uh, Valuar or any any Indian medicine, they will tell you how the system works. Okay, So they didn't see an individual as a character or uh, you know, they know the, how the part works and which part can create which problem. Actually, though it materials, so for me, asthma materials in lungs, but the problem is not in the lungs, problem is in the gut actually. So similarly, many issues material is in different parts, ears, eyes, but the problem is in that how one part affects the another part of a whole. Uh, so this knowledge is there in Indian medicine, I would say, actually. Western medicine is maturing. It will take time, but it has reached actually, reached this holistic thinking. Recently, allopathy is talking about holistic uh, um, because there is a problem with um, uh, no, the medicine of compartmentalization. If you remember uh, Adam Smith, so I'm going to show you um, the relevant images. So I talked about, so I think this is Adam Smith. Am I correct? This is Adam Smith, right? Anybody has done economics? I don't know, this is August County, right? Adam Smith is, um, I think I have Adam Smith. Okay, I think I didn't have Adam Smith. Before before Adam Smith, I let me introduce Jasper uh, you know, Hofmeyer. This is the person who defined this uh, title for his essay on uh, ecology. He used the word I am is plural actually. We are forgetting the point that I am is a plural. An individual is made of many society that somebody drinks milk. So individual is not an individual actually. Individual is a plural. I am is plural. So this this uh, idea is given to us by uh, Jasper. Uh, he's a biologist. Um, so biologist and ecologist easily understand systems thinking. Actually, system thinking comes very very easy to an ecologist or anthropologist because they always see the systems, um, cultural systems, you know, or ecological systems. Um, next is Adam Smith. So why? Uh, how? I suspect I'm not very sure. Uh, I would want to open this uh, question that you guys know Adam Smith. Anybody is familiar with Adam Smith? What uh, what he gave to us has done beautiful things, but he also there was a side effect of his theories. You guys know Adam Smith? Yeah, I guess the famous anecdote is uh, making pins and division of labor. Yes, division comes from there. Yes, division of labor. Uh, I think I downloaded not his picture, but this book actually. This is the book, uh, Wealth of Nations, where Adam Smith tried to understand how some nations are rich, and uh, he tried to uh, create this division of labor. So if you see this division of labor, even when I talk about asthma or anything, no? um, even that applies to medicine also, cardiologist, pulmonologist. So people are focusing in parts. So I'm an engineer, uh, somebody is a you know, doctor, somebody is a sweeper, somebody is a you know, um, ice cream seller. So there is a division of labor and everybody is uh, focusing on their profession. Uh, or, you know, uh, so this division of labor has created, uh, what it has created is a, in, in form though the, there is a positivity of focus and concentration or expertise or specialization there is a problem of uh, who is going to bridge who is going to look at the larger picture okay so um, adam smith's uh, theory has a side effect specialization or division of labor has a side effect of uh, uh, people not trying to cross uh, cross their borders of profession okay um, i i suspect this could have led prevented us from uh, thinking beyond our scope that we have put up blinkers uh, that is why i titled this 
uh, course as blinkers uh, of it. So I think at some point of time, we have all done this. So I made this painting long back that humans seem to behave like a horse. Not even the horse um, that uh, the horse don't go and put the blinkers on. Okay. I hope you guys understand what is blinkers. Uh, blinkers is the uh, blinkers is the device that is put on a horse to so that the horse will go in the path in you know, one particular path. It won't wander away. Uh, naturally, a horse is not born with blinkers, but in order to make a horse productive or effective, not for itself, for others, uh, when humans wants to use horse, they put blinkers so that it goes in the path. So I somehow I see that what Adam Smith did um, is uh, what you put blinkers on uh, every individual that we are focusing on. There is a merit to it. I'm not denying the merit, but the side effect of this division of labor or uh, specializations or compartmentalization of uh, human knowledge has uh, created um, this uh, not looking at other professions or not looking at other forms of knowledge, not looking at other perspectives. Um, uh, it is not just Adam Smith. Probably Adam Smith started it in West. In, in India also, we have started it in different form. Uh, but I think uh, someone has to, not everybody has to do system thinking, but it is. it will be nice if everybody has the awareness of system. Okay. Uh, but somebody has to do system thinking because somebody has to bridge, look at the gaps between this. Because as things change, as new technology comes, we create gaps between this uh, uh, labor. And somebody has to uh, somebody has to look at the larger picture. <clears throat> right. Um, so um, I think I spoke about uh, we saw the comedy. We uh, introduced to Joseph Hemay, uh, who talked about I am plural. So I am is not an individual and then plural. So the individualism, uh, what has resulted in the individualism is um, that uh, we only care about what we want. And we really don't look at larger picture, so such things happen. Okay, such things. So, uh, can you guess what animal this is? I'm sorry that I have to show you very grave images. Can you guess what uh, this species is? A breed of monkey. Which which monkey? A species. The monkey. Uh, is it? Do you know where it is? This is lion tail, lion tail macaw of Western Guards. And this is probably from Valpare or uh, some, uh, somewhere in the West, Western Guards. And the, the reason I'm showing you this uh, is uh, not to uh, not to no, make you feel bad or anything, but um, we have somehow made it that uh, no a road, uh, a reason for a road is our progress, human progress. But we have failed to understand uh, there is a system. OK, uh, forest is a system, huge system, and there are many parts and many species living. So if you change it, it is going to affect the parts. If you change a part of this whole forest, our Western Guards, it is going to affect other species. And uh, it is not tough. It's not tough to fix this, actually. It is very easy to fix this. And already in Valpare, uh, Western Guards and Eastern Guards, there are many uh, forms of solutions. Very simple solution is to build a. Uh, if you have gone to Western Guards, you might see such bridges. This is for the uh, macaws and other animals to cross the road, actually. So there is a over bridge, actually. Um, in uh, there are different kinds of designs for this. So. Uh, so such accidents or developments which uh, with a little bit um, narrow mindedness, I would say with uh, have no understanding of system, how the system forest as a system works. Forest as a system has many species in it and we can't just simply change it um, for ourselves actually. And it is not difficult to change for others also. There are many species and we can do development very easily like this and it's not difficult actually. Um, so systems thinking is um, this first step you have to understand that um, you know it is not singular view uh, what Arvind said 
not looking at uh, uh, you know, a road as a just road. Road is also exactly opposite for uh, animals, actually. When a road connects uh, for human beings, road is a connectivity. For animals, it's disconnection. Actually. It's exactly opposite. So um, when you look at forest, when we look at forest, we should not look at it as just uh, uh, you know how many how many uh, resources I can get, how many minerals I can get. The, we also have to look at it as from uh, uh, as parts and uh, many many other species living in it. So we have to understand the system. It is not a monolithic. Uh, 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 no, a part which is you can tap in. It is it is a system within actually. It is a complex system within. Uh, it is not just to be exploited, and uh, not just forest. Anything, anything. You can take a company. A company can be just viewed as a quarter results that how much profit is making. But a company also has people in it. Uh, people of different, uh, uh, no, uh, people with different families and uh, no family to feed and there is mechanisms and stuff so a company is also like a forest and a nation is also like a forest and an individual person is also like a forest there is a lot of organs and connections so nothing is a uh, island or nothing is um, i'm going to read say the same point okay i think you guys uh, would have understand, already understood um, so um, interestingly, this this incident is not. Uh, this is a very popular story of road and uh, other species. Is is there in Indian culture? There is a very popular story of uh, Manuni the Cholan. If you come to Chennai, not just Chennai, even in Sri Lanka, this king is very appreciated. It's a very ancient story of uh, an Indian king who uh, honored the um, cow. Uh, cow. Uh, loses its calf in the road and cow comes and demands justice from the king and this king delivers justice actually um, but i wouldn't say that he had systems thinking actually this is a very very uh, uh no, thousand year or two thousand year old uh, myth or a story or real king so we don't know um but the story is little bit uh, romantic it's not systems thinking okay um, it is basically a cow loses its calf in the road because the prince comes and uh, it goes very fast in the road and his chariot runs over a uh, calf. Um, so there was a lot of situation in the past that people could have thought about systems thinking, but they didn't actually. They had a very romantic notions. So the cow lost its calf. I should also lose my son. So he delivers uh, justice, which is um, so um, moral, moral thinking. Uh, prevents us from uh, really looking at system thinking. Um, I would very quickly talk about another uh, such uh, Indian mythology uh, where it's a Jataka tale or another king a, where a king promises a pigeon. A pigeon tries to run away from a vulture actually. And the king says, I will protect you. But uh, what king doesn't understand is a pigeon is a food for the vulture, actually. So there is a complex system that he was not aware of. So he ends up giving his own flesh. Uh, this is a very popular uh, Buddhist uh, tale of uh, King Sibi. Uh, this, this is a sculpture, ancient sculpture, where you can see the pigeon on the left. And uh, he orders uh, that his flesh be taken. So somebody is cutting his flesh and uh, to be given. To the, uh, I think this uh, a hawk or a, a pigeon, a vulture is damaged. Actually, the sculpture is damaged. So there was a situation where, but the lesson learned, the king has le learned that, that uh, pigeon is a food for a for a vulture. Actually, so um, he he have not understood the system actually, but without understanding the system, he has promised romantically, and he romantically decides to give give just just like the king Manu or King uh, Elalan, uh, he, he sacrifices. So system thinking is uh, situations were there, but people didn't resolve it. People resolved it very romantically or morally, um, which is not sustainable, right? Which is not, you can't keep giving your flesh for every pigeon that we have to save. Uh, so um, I'm not commenting on this. I'm just pointing out that people 
people uh, who took morals and uh, people with uh, romantic ideas uh, may not be uh, may not be you know may not be able to do systems thinking system thinking needs certain uh, understanding of the system complex system okay um, yeah so first we have to observe the system actually <coughs> Uh, we have to observe the system very well and then only we intervene <laughs> <coughs> so very similar situation of um, uh, word collision a lot of words get collided this is north america whether it is canada or um, us a lot of skyscrapers are built uh, skyscrapers have been built huge skyscraper uh, uh, um, and what happens is the migrant birds get hit a lot uh, because they mistake the glass. Um, most of the skyscrapers are made of the material uh, glass. So the birds cannot see that it is glass because they see the reflection of the sky and they see it's a sky and goes and gets hit. And these collisions are not like very uh, in a few numbers. You can imagine the huge migration of birds during winter or some and they get heat in large numbers and uh, this recurrence uh, made last 20 years Canada there is an organization called FLAP so at every year they found uh, they kept on correcting their uh, methods and they found uh, first thing they did is that they created patterns okay just like how uh, the Valpare uh, Western Guards they created the bridge the first thing is to create a product. Uh, so instead of glass, they used a pattern glass. So once they made uh, the glass into pattern glass, there are other like, you know, so in the skyscrapers, you can put dots, patterns, or uh, you can create a separate kind of glass also. This kind of uh, lessened the problem, almost 50% or you know, 60% of the birds collision reduced uh, just because, oh, no, no. yeah. Just because they didn't think very romantically, actually, um, they tried to solve it. Actually, um, once they uh, they understood uh, how the system works, they tampered with the system. First is to change the glass. Next is to come up with policies that everybody should use these glass. They experimented more patterns of glasses. Now they are trying to uh, pass on pass on law. So they intervened at three levels. They intervened at the product level, they intervened at system level, and they now are intervening at policy level. So uh, this is a better way of solving uh, a problem uh, rather than giving your own flesh or uh, running over your uh, right? Uh, yes, we committed a mistake of using glass in the skyscraper. That doesn't mean that we have to stop building skyscrapers. All we have to do is change the glass and make it uh, mandatory that everybody who is building a skyscraper with glass should use these uh, patterned glass. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, that is systems thinking, I would say. Okay. It's a good study of systems thinking. If you are uh, curious, you can go and check FLAP. The organization is called FLAP uh, Canada, and there are other organizations are also involved. Uh, so I will type, uh, type the, the chat. Okay. So FLAP flap in Canada organizations, they took 20 years. They experimented. They have many kinds of solutions for this problem, bird pollution problems, and they do awareness problems, awareness and many things. So they have almost solved the problem. So 99% of the bird collision is now uh, solved. <coughs> okay. Um, so that is that. Um, Similarly, um, I have a few more case studies. Um, uh, just uh, instead of uh, no, uh, the another 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 similar problem is Yellowstone uh, uh, National Park in America. Um, uh, very similar to the King City who gave the flesh for uh, pigeon. Um, what happened is in the Yellowstone National Park. Um, so you can read uh, instead of me. I'm just for, let me introduce the book to you. It's a beautiful book which talks about this 
so basically how fox introducing fox help to create the balance in the uh, ecosystem of yellowstone uh, no, national park basically there were no foxes so the deer population increased since the deer population is um, the uh, the the, they were eating a lot of plants and the plants were uh, plants which are needed for the butterflies are reducing actually. So excess of deers is creating an issue. So there has to be uh, something to balance the deer uh, population. So they introduced fox. Okay. A, a very similar problem is happening in Bihar. Bihar, there is an animal called Neil guy and uh, they are in excess. Or, or they are either in excess or we are encroaching its uh, space through farming. So they come and eat a lot of uh, farm uh, paddy fields and other uh, grains. So people have uh, now the government has passed the law that we can shoot these uh, and the Neil guy as declared as a vermin. So we can shoot it. But instead in uh, Yellowstone, what they did is they introduced fox and fox um, uh, just 40 foxes or something they introduced in the, uh, in the, in the sanctuary and then they they uh, they fed on the uh, deer and deer population didn't completely wipe up they kind of balanced it and that kind of uh, brought back the butterflies actually so foxes brought balances to the uh, ecosystem actually so uh, uh, the the Jataka tale or Buddhist tale of King Sibi who gave the flesh away I, is a very romantic and moral and ethical thing, but it is not a good observation of the, um, it lacks certain good uh, valid observation of the ecosystem. Uh, uh, so this uh, I would recommend that, you know, that be, this is the sustainable solution that, um, yeah, so this is a beautiful book. Probably you guys can read it. There are talks about this also. This project you can have a online uh, rewilding uh, talks. So basically, it is rewilding. The philosophy is called rewilding, that to understand the wild or forest and bring back the forest. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, because a forest is a very complex system, and uh, if you want to change forest or introduce any uh, projects into the forest you should understand how a forest works okay so that is what thinking system system thinking comes very very natural to a tribal because a tribal lives in a forest and they they understand complex system very easily once uh, neolithic which is once human beings started farming uh, they made things simple for themselves they started uh, running away from chaos. Uh, uh, forest is always a chaos. Uh, if you go, if you travel in a path in a forest one day, next day you can't travel in the same place, same path, because there may be an animal, there may be an elephant standing, there may be a tiger standing. So every day you have to change your path depending on the animal's encounter. So a forest dweller has to know the forest entirely uh, and uh, he just not uses visual, uses sounds and many things. He's always alert. Uh, a forest dweller always feels that he's a part of the whole and uh, there is a lot of parts to it. And he just glides very smoothly into it without disturbing the forest. And that is what is lacking in the uh, civilized human being or the city dweller. Uh, as we became civilized, the meaning of civilized is a person who lives in city. That means a uh, very structured, designed, well-designed city where we know where things are and we go in the same road and we expect things to be constant. But actually, things are not constant. Things are constantly varying. Actually, we don't want to encourage that. Um, we want things to be simple. And the extreme civilization leads to extreme simple thinking. And now we actually have to uh, stop this simple thinking and we have to gain the tribal knowledge or tribal way of thinking how to accept the chaos how to accept the complex systems how to appreciate complex systems and then navigate smoothly without with with least harm or least uh, um, so i would uh, recommend you uh, another book 
um, where this is beautifully talked about. Um, so, okay, I think I don't have that book here. I was there. So, walking is the way of knowing. This is uh, published in uh, Tara Books. Uh, is this book? I think I have this book there somewhere. No? Yeah. So this book. So um, once you read this book, you will understand how the tribals of Western Guards, um, what is their culture actually, how every day they travel, how they help each other. So walking is the way of knowing. So there is no map. We complain a lot in metros. We have metros. All the city, we have metros. We complain that the signage is not good. There is no clarity in the communication. Imagine the forest. Imagine people in, living in the forest. They are so aware. They are so aware of the complex system. They accept the complexity and they are prepared every day to change in a forest. Every day there is a new path that has to be taken in the forest. And walking in all path, if you have walked in all the path, uh, then you are much knowledgeable actually. So um, this is very opposite to you know, uh, what a city dwellers uh, life is. Okay. City dwellers take a very constant path and they complain about uh, traffic and we uh, wonder why there is traffic <laughs> with a heavy population. Uh, so um, who is going to look at the larger picture? Yeah, that is the thing, right? Um, so system thinking comes very, very easily to a tribal uh, whom we call as primitive people. Actually, If you look at the Australian uh, wildfire issue, the tribals knew how to solve it, but the civilized ministers went for a vacation, hoping that nothing will happen, that a huge tragedy happened. Um, so that is about ecological context. Uh, uh, so. I have more things to share, but I will stop and ask uh, what you guys think. Uh, uh, what have you gathered? Um, do you have any questions now? Uh, what is systems thinking? And did, did it help or? So yeah, this is Arvind. Uh, not a question, but something to share. OK, so uh, maybe more than 10 years back, I traveled uh, almost all the states of India. OK, and as part of travel, one of the things we look at is uh, architecture because you okay. see old buildings, new buildings and so forth. So what I found is uh, uh, architects for today are all wearing blinkers. OK, because every huge building you will find uh, an imposing uh, water uh, feature in front. So it might okay. be a very big fountain or some sort of a waterway. I guess yeah. Uh, yeah. partly they are inspired by Taj Mahal or other gardens from the yeah. Mughal period. Yeah. So uh, even modern buildings, <coughs> even if you go to Diamond District of Bangalore near Dumblur, you will find yeah. a huge water feature in front of the building. Yeah, but where they have failed in systems thinking is most of these uh, water features are, are are all an eyesore today because there is no water. Yeah, you cannot yeah. Uh, you know actually maintain them. Yeah. So the thing is, even new buildings that come up, the architects are making the same mistakes. They will put a yeah. big water feature in 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 the front, and probably yeah. when they launch it, uh, like inaugurate the building. For one or two months, it may be operational. Mm -hmm. After that, sooner or later, or when the summer comes, you will see that it is dry, and subsequently, that entire feature is not used. Yeah. Um, anything else you guys want to share? Um, um, how 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 it applies to engineering, or uh, probably uh, how it will be helpful uh, to us? is uh, no uh, let's say dabawala um, and swiggy if you if you take dabawala and swiggy uh, and you're designing a system um, see this is this is uh, what even arvind was saying um, there is this uh, this is uh, india coffee house in uh, trivandrum 
this is designed by uh, architect called Larry Baker. Okay. So he has come up with this uh, philosophy of vernacular architecture. Uh, Arvind, you might know, right? Uh, so, um, so this is uh, whatever Arvind was talking about is uh, that how materials to construct anything that we can nearby get materials within 10 kilometers. Basically, being aware of where uh, you are building. Actually, people of uh, either Bangalore or Chennai, even Chennai, I would say, if you stop and ask a Chennai person, how many rivers are there in Chennai? They would not be able to answer. There are actually three rivers in Chennai. People will name Adayar Kuvam, but they can't uh, name the third river, which is uh, Kosatalaya. There is also another water transport uh, system, which is bucking up by British. Now it has become a ditch. So, um, so we have not, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, I, I don't want to over blame Adam Smith, but um, in, in, in popular rhetorics, Adam Smith created this division of labor. And we have, we have uh, comfortably uh, blaming it on others. Oh, this is the other's problem. This is this problem. But the problem is a lot of problems are in the gaps. There is this popular uh, thieves who who do th theft between states actually okay <laughs> if you if you travel in a bus between two states there are certain kind of robbery uh, people who steal your stuffs in the bus your bags and all from andhra to karnataka or karnataka to chennai people who steal between the borders both of the both of the states will blame the other state and so these people get away actually so uh, a lot of our contemporary problems like climate change, AI, uh, war, uh, violence, a lot of these things are, um, we find somebody to blame and leave it. But sometimes uh, sometimes we have to come together and look at things. So if you take the water crisis in Karnataka or uh, Bangalore, now uh, we, we can easily find somebody to blame. But collectively, we are creating, uh, creating issues collectively. Uh, in terms of population or other things, uh, people uh, know how much a city can accommodate. Uh, are we using our resources properly? There are many, many, many layers of it. There are many ways of looking at uh, water prices in uh, modern cities, any cities, I would say, not just uh, Bangalore. Um, uh, almost all cities are going to face this problem. So we need systems thinking. So we have to look at uh, city dweller never looks at the place as a forest, uh, like a tribal looks at the forest. So all of the city dwellers have to uh, learn, learn the ecosystem of a city. Actually, where does the water come from? Once they are aware, they will be very responsible. Or well, since they are not aware where the where the water comes from, like it's in Chennai, people don't know where they are getting their water from. How many they know? Uh, beautifully, recently. Uh, the website of Chennai Metro has the images of the lakes where the water is coming from. Actually. And if they can develop it and make it visible, make it visible where your source is. Each product that you are using daily, if you know where the sources are, they will be much more responsible for it. Uh, if we if we should not look at one, uh, we should not look at a water as water. Water is part of the whole. Which is uh, you know uh, either a lake from Pulal uh, or from you no know, Chambarambakam. Uh, so all the lakes is bringing water to me, and also the forest. So nothing is individual. So we are very very comfortable with products, looking at products as individual. Nothing is individual. No, nothing is uh, you know alone. Um, I have to more to share. Um, I didn't realize that. Sir. <laughs> okay, so I'll quickly. Uh, um, glimpse through whatever I shared. So this is a person who identified. This is a philosopher, Martin Heidegger, who clearly pointed out where we lost this uh, attitude of systems thinking. Okay, uh, I would recommend you guys to read Martin Heidegger on uh, being. He talks about being how um, after industrialization we started looking at things as uh, in numbers. Thinking in numbers seems to be the issue of uh, a modern man. Uh, so I would recommend you to read Martin Heidegger. Uh, he's a German philosopher. <clears throat> and Dabawala is a beautiful system. It is better than Swiggy and Zomato, which is uh, throwing trash. Uh, this Dabawala is there in Mumbai. 
and they have six sigma they have never misplaced the dabba very similar to zomato which came long before zomato or um, swiggy very environmentally friendly system so i'll skip this uh, it's a beautiful book where you can read about indian ecology um yeah what else should i spoke about so economics uh, to look at economics without ecology was a mistake uh, so initial in, in india this person is an economist who worked with gandhi and uh, he had little tiff with uh, modernization so he didn't align with uh, nehru's modernization so he wrote this book called economy of permanence people didn't really uh, think of this book as a big deal because it was too romantic and ideal but recently <clears throat> recently Westerners, Europeans are writing very similar book uh, called Prosperity Without Growth. So if you look at Indian flag, we have very contradictory. Uh, if you see Indian flag, we have this non-materialism, saffron for non-materialism and uh, green for prosperity. This is the evolution of Indian flag. So Indian flag has very quite opposite ideas, which is prosperity, but non-materialism. How can you do it? Okay, uh, but Europe is now found a way of doing it and they are writing books and it's called ecological economics and this is one way of uh, one person uh, who's without growth means uh, how can we live well without damaging the environment okay economics for a finite planet because uh, most economic theory thinks that planet is infinite and the earth can provide as uh, you know infinite resources it's not true okay um so um another um uh, so another uh, economic so this is a very beautiful economic theory recently being implemented in every european city is cascading uh, amsterdam and every uh, even in australia this <clears throat> this is a graphic this is a beautiful graphic created by an economist an uh, economist she's an economist and she learned ecology uh, so she didn't restrict herself as an economist. I'm an economist. I'll only think about economy. Uh, she learned ecology and she created a beautiful graphics. So you can see the Indian flag happening here. So this is donut economics, where the green Russian is a uh, green region is called donut. So inner circle is poverty and the outer circle is environment. So we sh how can we should do development? We should bring people out of poverty, but we should not do too much of development to damage the environment okay so this this donut uh, now very similar to vada so uh, if you have to translate in uh, south indian terms it's uh, vada economics okay uh, <clears throat> so uh, there is a whole inside which is we should try to eradicate so uh, people are talking about what indian flag has been talking about in much more realistic way uh, what kumarappa did is little bit ideal now they are trying to west is trying to uh, solve it in a much more realistic way and this is all possible because uh, Envira, uh, Envira, uh, no, she is an economist uh, UK British economist but she went and learned ecology okay and similarly an Indian ecologist you know this person Rock Ali it's a beautiful book I would recommend you to read this book this person is a Indian ecologist he learned economy and he designed a product design or a Nicobar. Um, so uh, this is a beautiful book which describes how this ecologist designed the uh, virgin oil press, oil press for uh, Nicobar Island people. Okay, so he provided an economic solution, but he's an ecologist. Why should an ecologist think about economy? Why should an economist think about ecology? Right? Um, when if we surrender to Adam Smith's division of labor, we won't have systems thinking. We will have uh, very quality labor. Definitely, we will have quality products, but in the gaps, in the gaps, we will have a lot of uh, you know, climate change, AI, war. You no, know? we will have all the contemporary issues are between the labor, actually, between the professions. There is gaps, and only system thinking can uh, fix it, actually. Um, so I think I'll stop it here. I have more to share, uh, but I think this is good enough. And you can ask questions if you want, and then we can wind up. Any questions? Do you think it is relevant to you? 
Yeah, definitely yeah. relevant. But uh, let's hear from the audience. Any questions yeah. or comments? Any, uh, any questions that you want to ask? So, right. Okay, then we'll take it as. So, is uh, there any uh, method to train oneself towards system thinking? Because uh, so once we have specialized, <coughs> it becomes like a habit. Yeah, I, I think it is uh, system thinking uh, will be gained by once you start uh, no, um, unfocusing, I would say, blinkers off. Once you start noticing the other things and uh, no, how things are related, basically to look at the map of things. Look at how, uh, when you, you know your body, right? You know your body and you know it is not a, uh, it's not a monolithic body. It has many parts inside it. Once you understand your body is a complex system, so is a company, so is a city, so is a nation, so is Mother Earth or Earth, right? So is the cosmos. So how a human body, how you, it is easy to, for you to understand the human body. You can also, that, that is what Martin Heidegger is saying. We should look at things as a soul. You will have to look at Bangalore as a soul, Bangalore as a human being with complex system. Uh, and then, you know, it's not difficult, actually. I would I would not give you very, uh, no, it's just mapping, actually. Um, there are tools, actually. There are a lot of talks. I didn't want to use the same talks. You know, they have created tools for system thinking so that, uh, you know, you can use that. My point is you have to be ready as a tribal, actually. How a tribal is ready in the forest how that uh, uh, forest is understood by a tribal, right? Um, you should understand your uh, environment, actually, yeah. or even your company. Observe everything, actually. Observe everything. Problem is, we, uh, Arvind, I would say it is an attitude change, actually. You say, uh, we always ask a child, no? From child, we are training a child to focus, actually. What do you want to become, right? This is a, this is a, we have to do opposite, actually. We have to ask them to observe. Okay, we never ask the child to observe. So, observations is the tool actually. Like what you did. Like what you did, you traveled across India, right? You would have become a better uh, understanding of India. Uh, so did Gandhi actually. When Gandhi came to India, he was clueless. Gopala Krishna Gokhale, he asked that, first of all, you have come from South Africa, you lost touch with India. You go and travel India. So, um, so you must uh, spend and play. I have this image of uh, play. I wouldn't recommend any specific tools because you must play. Just like how uh, a child plays, no? In uh, many uh, rural children will play with the trees. Okay. They make things, they interact with the trees, they play with the trees and they familiarize themselves with it. So similarly, uh, if you want to understand Bangalore, you should uh, understand Bangalore. You should uh, go around and see its natural resources. Right. Yeah. There are popular talks uh, of the tools and stuff, actually. I, I, I'm giving a very attitude change, actually. Attitude change is to be aware of that anything is part of a whole, uh, and uh, any whole has a lot of parts in it. Right. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Yeah. Any further questions from others? Yeah. I was more curious that how we didn't encourage systems thinking in people from the childhood. That is because we ask people to focus at uh, blinkers on, you know, specialized. That, that has to first go away. Once it goes away, it really things will happen. That is my belief. Okay, uh, thanks Bhupati for sharing your uh, insights and uh, your views on this uh, topic. A yeah. lot of interesting examples uh, that you covered today and uh, just uh, equally interesting were the books that you have recommended. I'm sure uh, uh, re uh, some of the folks here can take uh, back that and uh, go and uh, read up some of these books.
Yeah. So this is there, there uh, is also films, yeah. yeah. There is also a couple of films. Share me. You can watch this film. Share me. Um, ah, ah. They are in Amazon Prime. It talks about uh, tiger conservation and the complex systems around it. Uh, and then uh, in terms of anthropology, without you know human human relations, and uh, this is a Malayalam film called uh, National Award film about a chain snatcher. How every individual behaves, and uh, you know. How the police system and step, law works to understand the law and people. It's a beautiful film. Tundi Mudalam Drikshakshi. Yeah. Sorry, Arun. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing uh, yeah. so many examples and books. Okay. And it's kind of an unusual talk for us. Like most of our talks are tech heavy. So this was again in the spirit of systems thinking yeah. and blinkers of. This was a very good uh, you know, departure, I would say. Thank you. Uh, have a good weekend.